children are devas and all of diti's children are asuras and that's why asuras are also called daityas diti's children are called daityas and aditi's children are called adityas so that's a side information now when hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha hiranyaksha was the younger brother hiranyakashipu was the elder brother and on one occasion hiranyakashipu tries to you know hide the whole of earth under the water and then uh, varaha avatara happens and varaha avatara rescues the earth from under water and in, in that uh, encounter varaha avatara uh, he uh, hiranya hiranyaksha ends up kill, getting killed by uh, varaha avatara so varaha avatara and hiranyaksha have a fight when, when uh, varaha avatara is trying to rescue the earth and then hiranyaksha get killed now that is the point where bhagavatam actually starts narrating the hiranyakashipu story we haven't we don't see much details of uh, how varaha avatara ends up killing hiranyakashipu hiranyaksha that detail we don't have in this chapter it may be in some other part of bhagavatam but here it starts with this so because of hiranyaksha's death the whole family is mourning and uh, hiranyaksha apparently has uh, left behind his wife and uh, four or five sons and uh, the mother diti is also very upset that the son is dead so they are all um, you know mourning and at that point hiranyakashipu comes and gives a long speech and that speech itself is so you know um, profound that you you think that hiranyakashipu is a gnani because he talks about lot of philosophical things in that speech he is trying to console the mother and uh, the younger brother's family about the dead hiranyaksha in that speech he says don't worry this body is uh, temporary this uh, life is anyway going to go nobody can kill the atma so uh, my brother would have definitely gone to a good gati i will make sure that he gets a good gati by performing all the tarpanam and all that and i will also avenge that vishnu who killed my younger brother so that is where he makes uh, he makes a pledge that i will kill vishnu i will kill vishnu you know in spite of delivering such a good speech he still has that ignorance that he can somehow kill vishnu okay so at that point he says i will kill vishnu and with his blood i will perform a tarpanam to avenge the death of my younger brother that is the kind of pledge he takes and with that kind of a vengeful attitude he goes out Uh, in fact he he first tells all his uh, you know uh, uh, soldiers and all his servants and all the asuras that you go out into the world and destroy all the brahmins and all the temples and make sure nobody performs any puja because he says it is the strength of the pujas and yagnas and mantras that the brahmins are doing which gives strength to the devas which in turn gives strength to vishnu so by destroying all the brahmins you will make sure that vishnu is weakened so with that he sends all his uh, servants and uh, soldiers and asuras into the world and they end up burning all the villages they end up burning a lot of uh, you know houses of brahmins and they do all all kinds of atrocities and uh, this is one part of his uh, vengeance then he decides that he will go and do uh, tapasya in the forest so he goes to the forest and uh, he goes to some place in himalayas and there he performs penance for 1000 years and he is performing a very severe penance like the uh, typical similar to the one we saw in the dhruva charitram he stands on one uh, leg and uh, with his uh, toe on the ground and uh, he doesn't eat anything and he performs tapas like that for 1000 years and his body is covered by an ant hill and his body is completely eaten up by all kinds of ants and insects and uh, other animals but still he is not bothered and he is performing that tapas so we will leave him there for now and we'll return to the wife of hiranyakashipu so her name is kayati kayatu yeah her name is kayatu and when hiranyakashipu leaves for the tapasya she is about 4 uh, weeks or 6 weeks pregnant and uh, then because this uh, hiranyakashipu has gone to the forest for performing tapasya indra feels a little bold so he says look this this fellow hiranyakashipu has gone to the forest for tapasya and he is going to come back with a very powerful uh, uh, boons and all that and the wife is pregnant and 
if she is going to give birth to another hiranyakashipu we are going to have a bigger problem so i'll at least kill this uh, woman and make sure that the baby is not born and he abducts this kayatu and he is taking her to indraloka on the way sage narada interferes and says no 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 don't uh, do anything to her you leave it uh, leave her to me uh, the indra uh, has a conversation with her he says uh, you know she is carrying hiranyakashipu's baby and tomorrow if this boy is also another uh, big demon we are all going to have more problems so i don't want her to survive she, he says narada says don't worry the boy who is going to be born from this lady is going to be a very great vishnu bhakta and he is going to be uh, in fact the reason for hiranyakashipu's death also so you should not harm her and you leave her with me i will take care of her and narada takes her to her, his ashrama and there this lady is performing shishrusha to lord narada and during the uh, evening or night times narada tells her stories about uh, lord narayana and interestingly when this lady kayatu is in narada's ashrama she says that i don't want to deliver this baby until my husband comes back from uh, his tapasya so please give me the boon that i should be able to carry this womb until my husband returns from his tapasya so apparently prahlada was in kayatu's womb for 1000 years this is according to bhagavatam okay now because of the stories of lord narayana that uh, you know she has she had listened the baby in her womb was also listening to all these stories so even before prahlada is born the baby develops a very strong devotion to vishnu lord narayana and uh, when hiranyakashipu comes back from his tapasya after getting all those boons from brahma ji kayatu is returned to the talas and the baby is born now we have to go back to the tapasya where uh, you know hiranyakashipu is doing tapasya so he has been doing tapasya for 1000 years and the devas are all uh, very terrified they say you know brahma ji you know why he is doing tapasya he is going to you know ask you for your own uh, brahma padam you know he wants to become the next brahma so if you don't stop him now he is going to create more trouble for all of us so you better go and stop his tapasya so with this prayer brahma ji comes to the place where hiranyakashipu is doing tapasya and he uh, asks him to stop the penance and you know his body is all completely eaten up so only the bones are remaining so brahma ji takes a drop of water from his kamandalu he carries a kamandalu with him all the time so he carries a drop, you know puts a drop of water and sprays on hiranyakashipu he gets a very beautiful and uh, very strong body so his body is revived and then hiranyakashipu falls at the feet of lord brahma and starts praying there is a you know very beautiful set of shlokas again which uh, hiranyakashipu uses to please brahma so brahma ji has appeared in front of hiranyakashipu after 1000 years of tapasya so he wants to make sure that brahma ji gives him all the best of the boons so he prays to lord brahma and he praises him that you know you are the creator of this world and nobody can defeat you you are uh, you are protecting all of us so he gives uh, whatever prayer we normally sing for vishnu or shiva he sings to uh, lord brahma and after that he says please give me this boon that none of the uh you know none, none of the jeevas that you have created can kill me so the boon he asks is nothing that is created by brahma can ever kill hiranyakashipu and he adds a lot of clauses you know he so he says i don't want to be killed at night or day i don't want to be killed inside the house or outside the house i don't want to be killed on the ground or on the sky i don't want to be killed by any animal or any man or any uh, weapons i don't want to be killed by any living being or any non living being okay so he he thinks he is covered everything okay so he is uh, you know like uh, the agreement dra- drafted by a team of uh, lawyers so he is drafted a boon which he thinks is very watertight and with this boon brahma ji says okay i'll give you because brahma ji knows that there is somebody whom i didn't create so i have a fall back clause so brahma ji was very clear about his exit so he said okay no problem nothing that i have created will any will be able to kill you and with this he goes back to hiranyakashipu goes back to his palace and brahma ji goes back to his satyaloka and this fellow starts uh, unleashing terror like uh, no, nobody has seen before he conquers all the three lokas and he goes and occupies indra's palace and he rules the heavens and he says uh, he strips all the devas of their powers and takes over all their powers so he is more or less like the dictator you know we know dictators who are uh, confined to one country but this guy was a global dictator so he was able to 
control all of the globe with a single uh, you know a centralized power so like that he was uh, you know ruling the planet and uh, this uh, boy prahlada is around 5 years of age and as i said you know before he has acquired a very deep bhakti for lord vishnu and at the age of 5 uh, the children are generally sent to the uh, gurukula for education and hiranyakashipu being the uh, lord emperor of the whole cosmos so he doesn't want to send his son to a gurukula away from home so he calls two of sukracharya's sons and sets up a patashala right next to his palace and he makes you know all the asura children also part of that vidyashala and uh, these two uh, gurus you know gurus uh, they are actually what uh, guru putras sukracharya is the uh, uh, guru of uh, asura kula so hiranyakashipu's guru is sukracharya but these two people who are teaching the children they are the sons of sukracharya so these two sons of sukracharya are running the school for prahlada and uh, hundreds of uh, asura children and uh, they are trying to teach prahlada uh, whatever they normally teach to the asuras and uh, to the asuras you don't normally teach dharma you only teach uh, all the you know what we call samadana veda danda how to control other people how to manipulate other people so these are the kind of things that uh, you know sukracharya's such uh, sons are teaching to prahlada and uh, the other children because in their world view this is the education meant for asura but prahlada gets into a kind of conversation with the teacher and says no 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 this, all this is whatever you are teaching that's not correct and he tries to teach the uh, sukracharya uh, sons that you know uh, you should uh, you should tell us about bhakti and you should tell us about the glory of narayana and uh, he tries to argue with the guru putras then these two people get uh, angry and they say no 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 who taught you all these things this is all nonsense there is nothing like uh, bhakti towards vishnu you learn what we are teaching you and uh, so Bar- prahlada keeps quiet and he quietly listens to whatever he they are saying but he is not convinced and one day hiranyakashipu wants to know the progress of prahlada he wants to know what he is learning so he takes prahlada on his lap and makes him sit there and say you have been learning uh, something from school all these days tell me what have you learned then prahlada tells him that you know i have learned that lord vishnu is the controller of everyone he is the supreme being and uh, all this world is uh, temporary in nature and uh, it is all going to be vanished and so the best way to live our life is to spend our time in devotion of lord vishnu and hearing this hiranyakashipu gets extremely angry because he had banished uh, vishnu puja from all over the earth and he has you know uh, installed his own statues in all the temples and he has instructed that all temples must worship hiranyakashipu so wherever puja is happening the puja is happening to hiranyakashipu and his own son is now telling him that lord vishnu is the most supreme and he is telling hiranyakashipu to worship lord krishna uh, lord vishnu so he is extremely angry and he calls the teachers uh, the two boys the sukracharya sons and he blasts them he says what have you been teaching my son i sent him to you to teach the proper uh, shastras and you are teaching him that vishnu is the most supreme lord what is this you are uh, you know you are uh, you are not being loyal to me then they they say no no sir we didn't teach him all these things he has learnt it from somewhere else we were trying to teach him the usual uh, samadana bheda danda and other shastras but uh, he is not listening to us so what he says is uh, you make sure that he is locked up in the school and he doesn't go anywhere else and make sure nobody interacts with him and you teach him in a intensive course okay so he is now locked up in the school and uh, the teachers are trying to give him some more intense uh, teaching and uh, you know as we know nothing actually enters prahlada's head because he is convinced that lord vishnu is the supreme and he is he is he is convinced that whatever the two uh, teachers are teaching it's all uh, you know not for him and uh, interestingly one day the the teachers are go- they have gone somewhere and the prahlada and other children are left alone in the in the school in the locked up school at that time prahlada calls all the students and teaches them whatever he knows he says that you know don't listen to whatever these teachers are teaching you know they are all teaching complete nonsense no you should learn that this world is a temporary thing death will come to you any time so we are all in the you know 5 6 year old uh, time this is the right time to start learning bhakti and pray to the lord because if you miss this chance then you will 
get sucked into samsara and you will not have the time to uh, uh, you know learn about anything about uh, the god so children uh, try to you know reason out with him he says no no one boy stands up and says you know my father told me that once i finish my study he is going to hand over all the house responsibilities to me he is going to hand over the khajana key to me and all that no if you tell me to learn bhagavatam and uh, bhagavan story he may drive me out of the house so i may end up losing all that uh, no control and money that my father is going to give then pralada says don't worry money is temporary in nature and uh, you, you know money won't take you very far you look at all those people who are uh, you know running after money they don't have time to do anything else so money is not really the real purpose of life so you will get money anyway if you learn bhakti of uh, vishnu money will come searching for you so you don't have to go in search of money and uh, another boy says you know if i start doing bhakti now where will i get a job you know i i won't i won't be able to find an employment proper hiranyakashipu wants only people who are able to fight and kill others and if i start learning bhagavatam and bhakti from you then i won't get a job from uh, hiranyakashipu and another boy says you know if i come and sit in uh, sit and learn from you i won't get a girl to marry so who will marry me so all these kind of conversations happen and prahlada convinces all of them and says look all these things are not important in life if you learn bhakti and learn bhagavatam now maybe you will get a very good girl who will even take care of your parents because then he he actually gives uh, a lot of worldly examples and says that if you get married and if your if your wife is not uh, of a good character then she is capable of driving away your parents and your relatives from your house and he is mm-hmm. she is capable of you know dominating your uh, life so you have to be very careful what kind of boy you know girl you are going to get married to so if you learn bhakti and if you learn the bhagavatam and uh, vishnu's mahima there is a good chance that a good girl will get married to you so he kind of convinces the boys and finally they all uh, learn from uh, prahlada whatever he wants to teach and uh, at one point they all sit and they are all meditating in that school with closed eyes and all that with at that time the guru the two people who are supposed to be teaching they come and they find the whole place is like a you know dhyana mantapa and uh, then they are more enraged so they drag prahlada to the king and says look he is not only not listening to what we are teaching he is spoiling the other students also so you must do something to make him you know uh, come to line at that point hiranyakashipu is extremely uh, angry and he says okay now there is no point in trying to reform this boy he is only to be killed so even though he is his own son he you know that uh, anger towards vishnu is kind of uh, um yeah blocked his vision yeah so he is not able to think properly it is clouded his vision so he says i don't care if this is my son he is teaching uh, you know vishnu bhakti to all the other students and that's strict no no i have to get this get rid of this fellow i'll kill him so he orders uh, his soldiers to do all that is possible to uh, you know some uh, physically eliminate him so they take him to a top of a mountain and uh, you know throw him down from there and uh, when he falls uh, bhuma devi creates a bed of uh, flowers for him and uh, it it makes sure that when he falls down he is not injured okay then he uh, he takes some three or four wild elephants and uh, he directs the mahout to you know uh, make the elephant step over this boy and kill him but then the elephants are not able to uh, do that because when they see prahlada they he appears uh, like a lion to their eyes so the elephants are terrified of uh, prahlada because they don't see prahlada they see a lion and they run away and uh, then at another point uh, hiranyakashipu gives a pot of poison deadly poison gives it to his wife and says you mix it in food and give it to your son so he forces the mother to feed poison to the son and then uh, you know the, the wife being a pativrata she cannot uh, refuse the husband's order so with a lot of tears in her eyes uh, she goes to the uh, palace and uh, she tries to mix the poison with the food and the poison is so toxic that even as she is mixing the food uh, she fall, kind of uh, um, yeah um, she loses her consciousness two three times and she swoons and falls but with great difficulty she mixes the food and then she calls prahlada and uh, even as she is trying to tell prahlada to eat the food she is crying so the boy asks uh, okay mama why are you crying what is wrong then she says you know this food is full of poison uh, your father told me to give this to you i didn't want to give it but i can't uh, disobey your father so 
you you will die if you eat this food but i have to make you eat this so this is the problem then pralada says don't worry you know i am protected by lord narayana nothing can harm me so he eats up the whole thing and says he give, give me some more uh, food with poison okay then uh, the, she uh, the my mother sees that nothing happened to the boy and so she drags the boy along to the uh, court and tells the king look you told me to feed poison to this boy he has eaten the whole of the food i gave and he is asking for more so this boy cannot be killed by normal means so you please understand whoever is protecting this boy is also the same narayana who is protecting you and me and this whole world so it is time that we you know follow his uh, words and uh, do uh, bhakti to lord narayana this is the wife's advice to hiranyakashipu then hiranyakashipu is even more angry so he says no this is uh, getting too much earlier he uh, he changed the boy's uh, the school boy's mind now he has changed the mother's mind also now this cannot go on like this so he confronts prahlada head to head and he says you tell me what is this narayana all about you you tell me what do you know about narayana then he says the prahlada says narayana is the one who is protecting me he is protecting he is the one protecting you he is the one protecting this whole rajyam of yours this whole kingdom of yours and not just lord narayana is the one who is protecting this whole creation all the seven worlds so you you cannot uh, deny that fact you you may be the king today but you will not be the king forever so you better learn how to accept lord narayana into your life and pray to him so that you get a good gati so hiranyakashipu will have nothing of that so he says uh, okay tell me where is this narayana and the boy says he is everywhere and uh, what do you mean everywhere i can't see him anywhere and then you know in that court uh, there are a lot of pillars you know it's a huge building there are at least 1000 pillars and each pillar is uh, em- you know embedded with lot of uh, diamonds and other pearls and other uh, you know precious stone so he points to one particular pillar and says tell me is lord narayana in this pillar in this particular pillar and prahlada says yes i am in that pillar uh, narayana is in that pillar and before that hiranyakashipu uh, asks prahlada he takes out a sword and says look if i cut your head now do you think lord narayana is going to come back and stitch your head and put it back on your head i mean shoulder he says uh, prahlada says no what do you mean no he says do you think lord narayana is going to wait until you cut my head even before you cut my head he will come and stop your hand so that is the level of uh, you know confident prahlada had in the protection that he is getting from lord narayana and so pointing to this particular pillar uh, hiranyakashipu says is lord narayana in this pillar and hiran uh, prahlada says yes he is very much there i can see him with my own eyes then he breaks that pillar with his sword the sword is so powerful that he is able to break that pillar and from that pillar emerges lord narayana in the form of narasimha and uh, lord narasimha as the word says you know he is a hybrid of lion and human form so he has a head of uh, uh, lion and the body of human being and then he has all the other uh, you know uh, lakshanas of lord vishnu namely four hands and shanka chakra and all that his uh, appearance is very terrible he has got uh, tongues like a sword and he has got very powerful nails like the you know like nails of the lion he got very powerful nails and uh, when this emerge when when this narasimha emerges from the pillar it is about 2 hours or so for sunset so those 2 hours somehow nar narasimha and uh, hiranyakashipu fight because you know uh, narasimha has to kill hiranyakashipu when it is neither day nor night so he was waiting for the twilight period when the sun has just set and the night has just not started so to cover those 2 two, two hours of time narasimha and hiranyakashipu have a terrible fight and at the end of that fight lord narasimha simply carries hiranyakashipu in his hand and walks to the uh, steps of the palace so that he is neither inside the palace nor outside and then he sits on the steps and puts him on his uh, thighs so that you know hiranyakashipu is neither on the ground nor on the sky and with his own hands with his nails he uh, tears open his uh, stomach and takes out his intestine and puts it as a garland you know this is the scene that is described so the the idea is because he is uh, destroyed by the nails the nails are neither living nor non living you can neither call it living or non living because you can cut it off 
so in that sense it is non living but they grow in that sense it is living so it is neither this or that and the time when he was killed is neither day nor night and uh, uh, lord narasimha was neither uh, animal nor uh, man and he was not created by brahma ji so all the clauses that hiranyakashipu had mentioned in his boon all of them were fulfilled and hiranyakashipu's uh, life was brought to an end with that all the problems of the devas and all of the world was uh, over and uh, but lord narasimha is still very angry uh, the anger was because hiranyakashipu had threatened and endangered his best bhakta prahlada so he he was not able to swallow the fact that one of his bhaktas was in danger so because of that he emerged from the pillar and that anger was still uh, very uh, you know uh, very fresh in his mind and he goes and sits on uh, hiranyakashipu's throne with uh, all that anger and all the devas try to pacify him brahma ji tries to pacify him they even call lakshmi devi to pacify uh, lord narasimha but lakshmi devi says no no i have never seen him in this kind of a, a ferocious form so i don't want to come anywhere near let him first cool down then i'll come so lakshmi devi also backs out and finally all of them they request prahlada to pacify lord narasimha so prahlada goes and falls at uh, narasimha's feet and then narasimha cools down immediately and he takes him on his lap and then uh, prahlada sings a very beautiful prayer for about 20 25 shlokas and um, as i mentioned in the uh, dhruva charitram this prahlada stuti is also a very beautiful section which one can uh, you know learn by heart and use as daily prayer and um, after that uh, narasimha uh, lord narasimha cools down and he crowns prahlada the king and uh, then he grants him a boon that prahlada will be uh, um, uh, chiranjeevi chiranjeevi means uh, one without death so he he says prahlada you will be a chiranjeevi and all your descendants will also be chiranjeevi so i will not kill any of your uh, descendants so prahlada had a son called virochana and you know virochana story comes in uh, uh, another puranam and it also comes in uh, chandogya upanishad uh, in chandogya upanishad uh, there is a story where brahma ji makes an announcement that i will teach the most sacred of all the vidyas to whoever comes to me and uh, so the devas uh, elect devendra to go to brahmaloka and the asuras elect virochana to go to brahmaloka so brahma deva teaches uh, brahma vidya to devendra and virochana so that is virochana's glory and virochana's son is mahabali and mahabali was again a very central character in the vamana avatara which we will cover uh, maybe next week or the week after so vamana avatara story is how uh, vishnu in vamana avatara conquers mahabali and sends him to patala so these are the uh, uh, boons that prahlada gets and prahlada rules after that for uh, many long years and uh, finally he becomes uh, liberated he leaves the kingdom and uh, he merges into lord vishnu he goes to vaikuntha so this is the story of hiranyakashipu and narasimha avatara i think uh, we have a lot more time maybe i'll cover some more story but before that any questions i didn't i didn't expect it will uh, you know end so quickly mm-hmm. I, i was probably very fast so any 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 questions any discussion or should we shall we move on to the other story so what is the benefit uh, of hiranyakashipu being worshiped by people like what does he gain from this what does he gain ego sex satisfaction or anything else okay see in the puranas and in the bhagavatas what is mentioned is that whenever you do a puja you make an offering and that offering goes to the person to whom it is meant okay so all of us do all kinds of pujas and we worship all kinds of devatas so the devatas are benefited in fact when you do a shraddha or a tarpana you are offering to the pitrus who are the pitrus pitrus are your uh, ancestors who are dead and gone and the tarpanam and the shraddham that you offer in this uh, in these you know the, the whatever ahuti you give it reaches those jivas who have been your ancestors and in whichever lokas they are and in where whatever form they are they will be nourished and uh, you know uh, 
taken care of by this offering. It is like, you know, some, suppose I give you money. Yeah. You can spend that money, right? <clears throat> it's like that. So, when the whole world performs puja to Hiranyakashipu, it gives him that kind of spiritual strength. So, he is able to enjoy whatever, uh, you know, offerings he is getting. It is not... It is not a gross offering like giving money or giving food, but it is a subtler offering which transfers a certain punyam to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he, he is using that kind of spiritual power to control the whole world. So, mm -hmm. so what does he gain? He gains more power. So people are giving him more power. It's, it's like how you vote in an election. Mm -hmm. you know, nowadays you give election, uh, you have elections, you vote uh, somebody to power. And he enjoys that power for five years. How does he enjoy that? He, you give it to, uh, you give some pa piece of paper and a ballot paper and that becomes a power to that fellow. It's some, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a subtle power that Hiranyakashipu would get from whatever people are doing. But then you should watch, what you should remember is they were not doing it on their own accord. They were doing it because if they didn't do it, they would be killed. So they were doing it under duress. Okay. No more, no more questions. So we'll go to another portion, which is a very interesting portion. And, and uh, okay. any questions from the uh, conference? Yeah. Tell me. Ba 